from life-saving medications to contact lenses and fast food wrapping, PFAS, those forever chemicals that we've been talking so much about, are ubiqu ubiquitous in our lives. One local company says even if we stop producing products that contribute to our PFAS problem, the cleanup will take decades. Erin Azanzada explains how scientists are working to reverse the damage. Here inside this unassuming lab in a corner of Minneapolis. Scientists are working heads down to destroy a set of forever chemicals that's seeping into our drinking water and our public awareness. We do have a pervasive PFAS remediation need in the state of Minnesota. Even in our local water tables or our ag fields, we've got PFAS that's pervasive. It's going to take decades to clean up. What's at stake here? I think um, there's a significant health risk. To destroy PFAS, you first have to find it. We became PFAS detection experts so that we could become destruction experts. And doing that is no small feat. That is one black bead in a million of these jars. So we're trying to find a needle in a haystack in a series of haystacks. To find the needle, they put water samples into this machine no bigger than a mini fridge. We can detect PFAS down to the parts per trillion level. Claro's technology says they're different because they're destroying more types of PFAS. In most commercial labs in the country today, they're analyzing for 24 to 26. Like I said, today we do 47. Depending on who you ask, there are over 15,000 different types of PFAS compounds. In this laboratory here, we measure for 47 of them. EPA is currently regulating two, soon to be six. As the EPA is learning more and more about these compounds, as they're regulating more stringently, it takes labs like ours. Claros, which started with U of M scientists working on EPA, CDC, and Department of Defense grants, now has about 25 employees and is getting ready to go live on a larger commercial scale in a matter of months. There's about 10 to 12 companies in the country that are looking at PFAS destruction specifically, and we're all kind of at the same place where we're trying to scale up new technologies for PFAS destruction. Surely you're wondering, how do you destroy something that's infamous for being permanent? That answer is in this room, filled with barrels of industrial water waste and drinking water samples from around the world. How does it happen? Yeah, so once we have PFAS in a form that we can destroy it, we put it into our UV reactor here. So we add in some of our proprietary chemistry, and all we do is we turn on the lights. Even if you concentrate the PFAS, which they do with these columns, you have to scale to meet the crushing demand. This 100 liter treatment unit is the next step in their quest to scale. This unit is slated to go out to a customer uh, end of this year, early 2024. What if you can keep these compounds in use for critical applications, but you can ensure that they never leave the facilities, but we permanently solve the problem. Harnessing the power of this greenish UV light, a well-known water treatment method, and using it to solve a new puzzle. We're taking a technology that is known and adapting it for a global problem. You know, at Claros, we have the tagline, we solve problems without creating new ones. If we mess up, people get this in their water, and this is something that we take extremely seriously. How do we take our knowledge of chemistry? How do we take our knowledge of engineering and do something that we feel is important to the world? In Minneapolis, Aaron Hassanzada, WCCO News. A recent study by the U.S. Geological Survey found nearly half of the country's tap water could be contaminated with those forever chemicals. PFAS have been linked to certain cancers. They're water filters to help reduce your exposure.